Hello, dear friend. Welcome to Victory Church. Good evening. Today is July 25th, 2020, from Odessa, Texas, to the rest of the world. I am Gian, the founding pastor of Victory Church here, and it's my privilege to be here with you today sharing this message. This evening of Saturday, July 25th, positive thinking equal success. Do you want to learn how to succeed in life? You need to learn how to think positively. And it's a challenge. Sometimes it's not easy to think positively, depending on the circumstances. We will talk about it during this broadcast. And our pleasure here to share God's word is also to proclaim the great news that Jesus is Lord. And I hope that you have it as your Lord and Savior as well. My name is Jayan. I'm the founding pastor of this church. And uh, today we are going to be talking about thinking, positive thinking, representing success in your life. If you want to connect with us, please send, send us an email. The email address is info at vchurch.us. And also, if you are watching through any of our social media platforms, what if you give us a thumbs up or write a comment in any of those platforms? Our podcast is available for everybody. You can find it. If you have an iPhone, you can use the app podcast. Also, if you have an iPad or you have an Apple computer, the app is available. Otherwise, you can use any of the other platforms like Google Play Music or the very popular Spotify, iHeartRadio, etc. Also, I want to share with you our audiobooks. The website is pretty awesome. It's updated. You can download the audiobook, listen to it, or read the PDF version. Each one of those stories are 30 minutes. And we encourage you to go and check it out. I know you will enjoy it. There are cool stories there. The first story that you can find in mygiancarlo.com is a story of a family. It's a drama story called On Mask. Then you have a story of a girl that was insecure, inadequate. We have a romantic story, Tears of Joy. Action, for those who like, like action, Survive is the story. And we have a Christmas story, One Year Later, for those who love pets, Frankie is the story to, to listen to. And if you are into sports, made to win. But those who like the future and sci-fi and stuff like that, year 2064, that's the way to go. Thank you so much for being here, connecting with Victory Church. And if you are wondering, what about Victory Church? What's going on there? Well, first of all, let me invite you to join us every Sunday morning. At 10 a.m., we have our worship service. It will be great to have you here enjoying not just a good cup of coffee, but good fellowship. And every night from Monday through Thursday and Saturday evening, 7 p.m., you have videos here. Today, we are going to, to be talking about positive thinking will take you to success. So let me share with you the first scripture that we read in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Proverbs 4, verse 8. Think about what is good and worthy of praise. Think about what is true and honorable and right and pure and beautiful and respected. Think, 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 think. The key of success is in what you are thinking. Naturally, there are many things that... They emanate from our hearts, from our emotions, from our feelings. If you are upset, uh, probably you will have trouble to have a good thinking. I, I understand that. That happens to everybody. If you are sad, same thing. You are depressed. If you are emotionally disturbed, you will have trouble to, to think clearly, to process, to analyze what's going on. But regardless, what is what you are feeling? Proverbs chapter 4, verse 8, tells us that we need to think about what is good and worthy of praise. So th there is a need for us to direct our thoughts to everything that is pure and right. And uh, 
you need to understand this, that you decide what to think. Just like that. If you want to think about ugly things, it's your problem. You cannot blame your spouse for your horrible thoughts. You cannot blame your employer for your horrible thoughts. You cannot blame your children for your horrible thoughts or anybody else. Are you going to blame the president for your thoughts? Are you going to blame the economy for your thoughts? That's just not right. But you decide what to think. Circumstances are awful for everybody sometimes. For everybody, rich, poor, healthy, sick person, with or without people around, loved or not loved or hated, it doesn't matter. Circumstances change it. But what is what you think? You need to take ownership of that and mature and grow up and say, enough is enough with this thing. Because you cannot blame people for your thoughts. You know, whatever people do, there you go. You, you are right. If somebody is hurting you, if your employer is giving you trouble, your supervisor is mean to you, disrespectful, if uh, your customers are nasty, if your spouse is ungrateful and abusive, if your children are just a bunch of entitled children, I can understand that. Your father-in-law, mean, your mother-in-law, demanding. Yes, th that those things can be around you. But ultimately, you decide what to think. You need to take ownership of that. Because whatever is happening outside in, in your surrounding areas, sometimes we cannot control. But what's in, your, in, your, in our minds, my friend, that we can control. You decide what to think. What if people could see your thoughts? Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that people will be able to see your thoughts? That could be scary, right? Imagine whatever bad thoughts you have at some point and those who are around you could have access through an app. They point the camera to you and suddenly the app will show your thoughts. That would be horrible. That would be horrible for anybody. Imagine that you could do that to anybody and then you will start seeing what they are thinking. Oof. But there is one that is looking what we are thinking. That's why, remember this, you need to take ownership of this. You decide what to think. If you want to succeed in life, you need to be mature enough, serious about it and say, well, I need to rule my own mind, decide what to think, because it's stupid if I will allow people controlling my thoughts. You see? But let me take you to one more scripture. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Don't be like the people of this world. But let God change you inside with a new way of thinking. Then you will be able to understand and accept what God wants for you. You will be able to know what is good and pleasant, pleasant, pleasing to him and what is perfect. Because God can give you a new way of thinking. But you cannot be like the people of this world. You cannot be like others. You know, people say, where do you go? Where everyone is going. No, that's not true. People do things for whatever reasons. Are you going to do whatever they are going? Where are you going? I'm going to the cliff. I'm going to jump. Why? Because everybody's doing it. Okay. Really? You're not going to do that. No. Don't be like people of this world. You know? Because people of, of this world are awful. You know that. People in this world, they are terrible. They are just thinking of doing a lot of bad things, you know? Hurting each other, cheating, stealing, lying. Everything that is against God's word. Everything against that is decent and correct and correct and 
honorable, and pure. People of this world, they don't respect anything. But this scripture tells us also that God can change you inside. And that is the key for success, you know. Are you tired of losing? Are you tired of losing? Or are you happy losing? What is going to be tomorrow? Another, another day to lose stuff? Or another day to win? God can change that in you. If you allow him. He has a plan for you. The Lord has a plan for your life. Maybe you don't see it. Maybe you can't imagine what this plan is. But I promise you this, according with the scripture, if you decide not to be like the people of this world and you allow God to change you from inside, he will show you what's that plan. One step at a time. Let me take you to one more scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. We tear down every proud idea that rises against itself, against the knowledge of God. We also capture every thought and make it give up and obey Jesus Christ. We tear down every proud idea that rises against itself, against the knowledge of God. It is a decision because you decide what to think. You decide what to think. You want to succeed or you want to lose. It doesn't matter what the circumstances are. Without money or without health or without people around you, without a job, without a business, without, without whatever. But you decide because you own your own mind. You need to take ownership of your thoughts and decide that you are going to do whatever the Lord wants you to do. Therefore, when the thoughts come to you, to your mind, that are against God, you are going to turn them down, and you're going to take them captive to the obedience of Jesus Christ. You say, no, I'm not going to think of that. No, I, I'm, not going to, I'm not going to beat up this guy for what he did. No, I'm not going to go and, and start uh, stealing stuff. No, I'm not going to, to be cheating on anybody. No, I'm not going to beat up this person. No, I'm not going to do that. No, I'm not going to, to plan this, this robbery. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to get high. I'm not going to get drunk. I'm not going to do anything that is wrong. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to master my mind and say, obey God, obey the Lord Jesus Christ, because he has a plan for me. You can say no to bad thinking. Do you know that? You can say no to bad thinking. Any bad thoughts come into your mind, you can say, no, no. I'm not going to think that. No, I don't allow it. In fact, what you need to do is once you, you tear down those thoughts, those ideas against God, and you take captive all those thoughts and say, I'm going to obey God, you're going to let the Holy Spirit inspire you. The Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God can inspire you. And guess what? He will be surrounding, around you. He will be around you, showing you things around your, your life, your circumstances. And you say, I'm going to... I'm going to surrender. I'm going to surrender to God. I'm going to just surrender to God, you know, because if He is around me and He wants the best for me, I'm, I'm going to surrender. Have you tried to surrender to God in order to succeed? You know, there is something so funny. If somebody wants to rob you, they come with a, with a weapon and they put the weapon against you and they say, put your hands up. Put your hands up. And what people do immediately, right? <laughs> it's a sign of surrendering. Do you know that when we are in the house of God, worshiping God, we lift up our hands and we say, I surrender all. We lift up our hands, surrendering to God. 
That is why so many people do not succeed in life. You know that? Because they don't want to surrender to God. They say, I'm going to get it myself. I'm going to conquer. I'm not going to give up. I'm going to do it right this time. I'm going to do it well on my own, by myself. I don't need anybody's help. Well, that's the problem. We all need the help of God. In order to succeed, you need God. Let me show you one more scripture. Mark 11:23. This is what the Lord Jesus says. Truly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will come to pass, it will be done for him. You know, there is a connection here between what we are thinking and what we are saying and we, what we believe. You are going to succeed in life when all those things are interconnected and all align in the same direction. You believe in God that he is with you. You do not accept failure in your mind. You just believe and trust in God that you are going to succeed no matter what. And then you say it. I'm going to succeed in the name of the Lord God. I'm going to be able to do this in the name of God. What is the challenge you have, my friend? Do you have a big debt and no money? Or you don't have someone in your life? Are you alone, separated again, perhaps? Or you lost another job? You are broke? You had a company and you filed bankruptcy? What, what is the situation? I don't know. But whatever the situation is, when you surrender to God and you start to lead your mind because you own your thoughts, you need to stop Thinking what is wrong, whatever is against God. Think of what God wants you to think. Surrender to him and believe in his power. Believe it, believe it. Think about it. And then you say it. And you say, I'm going to pay this debt. You know, I'm going to find a new person to love. I'm going to get a new job. I'm going to start a new company. I'm going to get out of this hole. I'm going to find a solution for, for my life. In the name of the Lord Jesus. You see how everything can change for you? But you need to put all your trust in the Lord. And that's very important. You need to put all your trust in the Lord. Do not trust in yourself. Trust in the Lord. You believe. Believe in your heart that He will do it. You believe in your heart. He will provide for you. What is what you need, my friend? A new opportunity? Second chance, third chance, four, five, six. What is what you messed up that you, you need a new opportunity to succeed? What, what is it? It doesn't matter. Put your trust, all your trust in the Lord. Trust in Him and guide your thoughts. Lead your thinking. Do not accept bad thinking. Refuse it. And say, no, I'm going to obey God. I'm going to do what is right. I'm not going to be thinking or saying or doing anything that is wrong. I'm going to allow God to rule me. I need to surrender. And with all of your heart, you trust in him. And you keep thinking about success. And you say it. It's all about the three things connected. Your heart, your mind. And your mouth. All that. My faith is that he is guiding me. Independently of the outcome. Independently of the outcome. You know, when you come to that point that you say, I'm going to obey God. I'm going to do whatever he says. I believe that he is guiding me in this. Perhaps you are searching for a new person to love in your life. Maybe you messed up the previous relationships and you are done with that and you say, I need to find somebody else. The Lord has to bring me a new person in my life. I need to restore my marriage, for instance. Maybe the situation with your children is a disaster and you say, I need to find a way 
that I connect with my children or with my parents or with whoever. If the situation is with your work, with your money, with your health, it's the same thing. You need to believe that he is guiding you. And while you believe that he's guiding you and you are doing what he says, you will just trust in him regardless what is the outcome. Because that is the success itself. When you accept his will and you say, Ah, oh, I'm being successful because I'm doing God's will. Do you see that now? The true success is not money or family, jobs, accomplish accomplishments. The true success is not about that. The true success is that you accept his guidance independently of the outcome. You believe in him. You trust in him. And you just go one step at a, at a time. One step at a time. Worshipping God, trusting in God, leading your thoughts. Stop with the bad thinking. Stop with the bad thinking. You know, sometimes going back to the past with your memories, it's a bad idea. It's a bad idea sometimes. You had an ex and you keep thinking about your ex and this person is already in, in a new relationship with somebody. Forget about it. You are thinking about the company that you used to work for. And, and forget about it. Stop thinking of the past. Let it go. God can do new things for you. Do you see that, my friend? He can do good things for you. But it's a process that requires high discipline by saying no to the bad thoughts all the time. Because you need to take ownership of your mind. Do not let the circumstances or people rule your mind. Yes, maybe you don't have money enough to do many things and you have to do what other people are telling you. Perhaps even you don't have a house. Maybe you live in somebody else's home, in a room, or you are sleeping in the couch. Maybe you lost everything. Maybe you are back with your parents or somebody, one of your friends is allowing you to sleep in the couch. You don't have any income. You used to have a company and now you are looking for a job. Well, that's life. But that's not the end of it. You need just to trust in him and, and believe that he will guide you for a new beginning. And then it's when you, you win this battle in your mind. Say no to the wrong thinking. Say yes to God. Take all, your, all those thoughts to the obedience of the Lord Jesus Christ. Surrender to Him. Trust in Him with all of your heart. Think positively and speak it and say, I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. I'm going to get healthy again. I'm going to be back in business again. I'm going to get a new job. I'm going to find a new person to love. I'm going to have a new home again. I'm going to do it again. Second chance, third chance, four, five, six. It doesn't matter. The Lord can do many wonderful things for you if you trust in Him. And that is what I want you to, to, to see. Because you know what? You can change. You can change, my friend. You can change. And the only thing that you need to do is just to understand that is in the Lord Jesus Christ where you can find the salvation. You know, Romans chapter 10 verse 9 declares, If you openly say, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from death, you will be saved. It's all that is required for a new beginning, for a new opportunity. All that is required is to believe that Jesus is the Son of God. That God raised him from death. That he is alive. And that Jesus is your Lord. One step at a time. One fight at a time. Let God win the first fight in your heart. Let him be the conqueror. The victorious one in your heart. Surrendering to him. And say, okay God, I'm going to do it your way. You will see wonderful things in your life. I hope that you can join us to church 
tomorrow Sunday, July 26th at 10 a.m. here in Odessa, Texas, Victory Church. It's going to be a great message. I would love for you to join us here in person or you can watch live. In the meantime, I just want to tell you, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for connecting and watching. And I hope to see you soon here. Have a beautiful evening, friend. Thank you for watching Victory Church. Please feel free to contact us. Our email address is info at vchurch.us and our phone number is 432-614-9798.